Uh, so thank you very much for that. So uh, as mentioned before, I'm, I guess, the other half of this session in regard to natural motion games. Uh, although I won't really be focusing on tech, rather I'll be talking more about business strategies and also, uh, more importantly, looking at a specific case study when it comes to Jenga. So the title of this presentation is Four Million Downloads in Four Days, a Postmortem for Jenga iOS. Um, pretty much at Natural Motion, uh, we've been experimenting with a lot of different types of games when it comes to mobile. Uh, right now our focus is on iOS, we do have some games on Android as well. Um, but, you know, we've been looking at the different business models. Historically, as a company, we actually started off as a premium, uh, I'm sorry, as a premium app company where all of our apps are actually for, you know, 99 cents, 69 pence, you know, whatever the region is, for upfront cost. But now, uh, you know, we're right now venturing into a different area where we're looking at freemium since, you know, a lot of people will tell you freemium is the future. We do believe that. So what we wanted to do was utilize one of our games that's historically done really well as a paid app and see what it would do on the freemium side. What we see already in the industry is a lot of people are making this move. So we wanted to get some information. Hopefully today I'll be able to share some insight. Um, also as a kind of a precursor, um, I'd be more than happy to take Q&A if we have time, um, but also ask specific questions and answer as much as I can. Really the goal of this presentation is to be as educational in regard to actionable insight. So hopefully you could take something away um, from what we learned, uh, the good and the bad when it comes to natural motion. Um, so the title that we're going to be focusing on today is Jenga. Uh, Jenga historically is actually a very solid IP when it comes to board games, uh, or, or I guess strategy games as it fall under, uh, where Jenga has been known for quite a few years on, on that side. So what we had actually done is we partnered with the license holders directly, uh, in this case it would be Hasbro and the original Jenga IP owner, and made a mobile game out of it. First off, it started off as paid, as I mentioned before, at 99 cents uh, in the US and English speaking countries, 69 pence uh, in the UK, et cetera, uh, where we're looking at the tier one pr pricing structure. It did extremely well. Uh, actually, Jenga was utilized in a keynote by Steve Jobs in the WWDC uh, to actually share, showcase, you know, gyroscopes and kind of some of the uh, uh, features behind it. So, you know, the app's done well. It's reached top five paid in almost every tier one country. But that was released in 2010, actually late 2010. And recently what we were seeing is that the game was maybe losing a little bit of steam. You know, it was doing still pretty well in the paid downloads. Uh, for those of you familiar with the iTunes charts, uh, we were usually in that number 75 to top 100 paid charts for a lot of the tier one countries. So it wasn't doing terrible by any means, but you know, where, when it comes to the charts, you really want to be in the top five. That's where the real money was. So what we realized is that this IP is great. Um, the game is actually, you know, extremely solid. What can we do behind it? And what we realized is, why don't we experiment moving the game to free? What you're seeing is a, lot, a large amount of free app a day networks starting to show up and, you know, showcase these apps where it's limited time free, you know, 99 cents for free for four days, three days, et cetera. So we wanted to test the theory out, but also see what is the data we can get back from it. So just a quick screenshot, I didn't really want to put a video into the gameplay since it takes really long. Uh, what we ended up building was pretty much a 3D simulation of a Jenga tower. And you could use real animation, real uh, character, uh, I'm sorry, real physics animation where you could touch, pull the pieces, and of course the entire tower can fall if you choose the wrong piece. Uh, from a visual standpoint, it's absolutely gorgeous. And you know that's why we did really well with the application. So kind of moving forward, uh, when we did move it to freemium, uh, it absolutely blew it out of the water. Uh, this game was so successful that it went past all of our expectations. So kind of just looking at the numbers, uh, we released this game for a period in early March for free. Uh, it was actually during GDC San Francisco, the game developer conference uh, in San Francisco. And we released it starting on a Monday. From that Monday to Thursday, uh, in those four days, it did four million downloads only on iOS. Uh, also, it peaked well over a million DAUs. Uh, it was the number one overall free application in 50 countries within those four days. And uh, more importantly, and this is something I really want to harp on, we did this with a zero dollar marketing budget. Uh, we did no user acquisition spend. We did not pay for any press. Uh, we did not do any other type of you know, uh, user acquisition for this, which is really important for, for us because we were able to gather all this information. And the great small side thing for me was, uh, it ended up becoming a battle between Jenga and uh, OMG Pops Draw Something. Surprisingly, we actually started beating uh, OMG Pops Draw Something in every country in the world, uh, especially the tier ones. The only country we didn't pass them in was actually the US. Uh, we were number two. I was literally checking my phone every 10 minutes, uh, seeing if we passed them, but unfortunately we never made it there. But it was pretty impressive for us is where we took a game with $0 marketing budget, 
went up against the largest mobile game in regard to DAUs in the history of iOS, and we're beating it in the four days. Um, so, you know, from that, we realized there's quite a bit to learn from this. So what we're going to be doing today was just show you what we were doing in that four days. So this was a great screenshot. This is utilizing Magic uh, Rank. And what I was showing you is on the left, all you see are ones. That's our rank in all those countries. Um, I actually, the screenshot wasn't large enough to get all the countries we were number one in. So not only were we number one in top three, but also all the subse uh, subsequent subcategories as well. And we were killing it in top tier countries. Fortunately, Singapore did not make it in the screenshot, but we were uh, pretty well uh, in those countries as well. But you can see, you know, we were killing it in the UK, Canada, Japan. And this was really new to us because it was actually the first time we had huge, huge market penetration into Asia. Uh, simultaneously, we were number one in Japan, Korea, and China for an app that was not localized. Like, there is zero localization behind this game. And uh, it ended up running up the charts because we didn't have a lot of text, so there wasn't really a lot of issues with culturalization or language barriers. But, you know, there is initial text in the tutorial, but the game still was well received across the globe. So this is just like my favorite screenshot that I was sharing when it all occurred. So the overview of this presentation really is that I wanted to let you guys know what was natural motion strategy. A lot of the developers already have paid apps out that, that seemed historically is the right way to go. Get the money up front and of course you know, you know what your uh, you know, cash flow is. Uh, then next we'll be talking about how do we solve the discovery problem of letting people know of Jenga with a zero dollar marketing budget. Uh, third, we'll be looking at actually what are the alternative ways we utilize to monetize the app and what was the value of making Jenga free for not only that individual app, for, but for also the rest of our portfolio. And then lastly, kind of the results in summary. Uh, we did a lot of things good. We also did a lot of things bad and hopefully you could take away some of that. So you, maybe when you could have your own 4 million downloads in 4 days. I'm not guaranteeing anything though. Um, so going into natural motion strategy, um, it was actually pretty simple. We wanted to experiment with the paid to free model and kind of understand a, how many downloads could we get moving to free? But B, once we moved it back to paid, you know, would this A, uh, increase a burst of paid downloads as well? Uh, would we be able to get more visibility with a, with a, larger, with a larger DAU user base? Next, uh, you know, we wanted to understand, can we generate buzz during GDC San Francisco? For us as a growing company, also having a studio in San Francisco, recruitment sucks. It's uh, very competitive to say the least. So any advantage you can get during these major conferences is really important. So we felt that, hey, if we were maybe in the top 10, top 25, you could get some great buzz about natural motion so people know where we are. Uh, next, we wanted to understand monetization via third-party solutions. Uh, if you're in freemium gaming, I'm sure you've been pitched by about 70 networks. If you go out in the expo, there's probably another 20 of those networks out there. So we wanted to test a few things to understand how does that model work, you know, what are the expectations in regard to revenue, and of course, you know, what are the best practices as we scale. Uh, lastly, we kind of really wanted to understand cross-promoting within other natural motion titles. User acquisition is extremely expensive, so the, one of the big assets we've reali realized so far is cross-promoting within our, our own portfolio, where if you have five apps, you could showcase all your other apps within one and get free user acquisition in a way or form. So this is something we wanted to see is, hey, can we get a huge influx of users? And what we were estimating only was 250,000 users was what our maybe ceiling was. What could we do with those 250,000? Instead, we got 4 million, so we got to do a lot of interesting things. Lastly is my personal goal. I want to beat OMG Pop. I mean, that was pretty awesome if we can try getting there. That was my side goal. I did not state that within the company until it happened because I would have sounded a little crazy. So the big issue we're seeing right now is, you know, how do we solve discovery? Actually, slides might be out of order, so <laughs> uh, apologies on that front. But right, this ended up being a major issue for us. Right. Internally, we wanted to know what can we do with our own portfolio, but also what are the external options. So under external, we'll be talking about a few major things. First and foremost are the rise of free app networks. This is like free app a day, uh, magic app solver, uh, addiction app a day. There's quite a few now coming up. Second, I want to share with you some of the strategies we utilize to talk to press and blogs, not only within the US or Europe, but also everywhere across the globe. Uh, lastly, of course, leveraging social network and blog forms and posts. Um, you know, we utilize really weird strategies. Uh, I don't know if any of you are Redditors. Um, I posted on Reddit and that actually ended up being one of the strongest sources when it comes to user acquisition. 
Uh, next, we'll also look at the other side. What could we do internally as our company? So this would be, more importantly, interstitial advertising via cross-promotion. And of course, leveraging our own social networks as we have a Twitter feed, a Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook likes, and of course, you know, a YouTube video. So how could we aggregate all of this? Because this is what it came down to. We believed as a company that Jenga was strong IP, was a great game, that all we really need to do is figure out how can we get in the top 25, top 10, and maybe see an organic lift from there, where users could then discover it on their own. And that's really the hardest challenge, because for us, after you get that first 50,000 downloads and can actually break up the charts, uh, there's a very good chance that you'll have that snowball effect where everything just goes your way and users will let it rise organically in the top. Because for us, as soon as we reach top 50, top 25 overall in a lot of the major countries, uh, we actually shot up to number one extremely fast. It, it just happened in an instant because organic discovery was there. Uh, when it comes to mobile, you have to realize a lot of users are discovering based off the charts and you know the ranks there, whether it's the actual subcategories sub of games, board games, et cetera, or just top overall free. And this was a huge value for us and this was what we were striving for in our strategy. So let's kind of break down how we did each of these um, in a, you know, just a quick segment. And again, if you have questions, feel free to ask afterwards. So free app networks, there are a ton of them. Uh, and you know, for us, what we want to do is see how can we get all of them to utilize us. So we actually ended up launching as a launch partner with uh, App A Day by iDiction, um, and that was of no cost to us. You know, this was a new service coming out, and they were just looking at new apps to come in to the service where they can help bolster us. So we ended up utilizing them as a launch partner. But what we also did was we alerted all the other free app networks to be like, hey, Jenga's coming out free. If you want to pick us up, feel free to do it on your own. The reason we did this was actually, you know, a lot of people thought I was crazy sending out this email, because why would they send this out? Well, we had two major advantages. First, we launched on a Monday. No one launches on a Monday. That's like the worst day you should be launching an app. So what I felt like, there should probably be no competition then, right? If there's no one launching on a Monday, you're usually aiming for a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You want the weekend, because that's 2x more downloads. So I felt that there can't be that much great inventory. And then secondly, I thought, Jenga's really strong IP, that if these free app networks don't have a good app, they might just fill us in, because they want to show to their user base that, hey, we got you guys, Jenga, just for you, and we're the exclusive partner behind it. Of course, it's, no one has anything exclusive. Uh, we made it free to every user. But they're able to show that value back. So I ended up sending an email. I actually have a list of 96 free app networks. These are just kind of the major six. And let them know, hey, we're doing this for free. If you want to use this, let us know. I'll send you some art assets as well, and we'll get it done. Uh, out of that email list, 26 accepted for no cost. And they ended up running us on their own user base. Huge for us, because what we realize is it's free user acquisition, free discovery, where they're able to show it to their own network. Yeah, maybe they only had five to 10,000 DAUs on their own networks. Maybe some had 25,000. But when you start aggregating that, it becomes really impressive, because then you start getting that burst campaign. Next, press. Same thing. We didn't pay for press, but I emailed every damn press contact I had. I wanted to let them know that, hey, Jenga's coming out free. And I wanted to make sure they had everything. So I created a mini press kit, a mini media kit. They had the high quality Jenga logo. They had Jenga screenshots. They were able to show some you know, great lines from our game, you know, high action. I mean, there's no action in Jenga, but we, we, we spice it up. Um, and we wanted to let them know that it's coming now, and maybe you should be writing about this. You know, I'm pretty sure, like, I put the major guys here, TechCrunch, VentureBeat, Gama Sutra, Pocket Gamer, Develop. Uh, I sent to these guys, none of them picked me up, unfortunately. But what was impressive was I got a lot of the second tier guys. And again, any discovery is good. What we ended up seeing is that a few of these guys actually picked us up secondary on a Tuesday or Wednesday on a blog where they're showing, hey, Jenga's now breaking the charts. And they were able to do that really easily because I already gave them the press kit. They didn't have to search for Jenga's logos. They didn't have to search for any type of screenshots. They already had that in hand. And if they already see Jenga going to the top of the charts, it could be a quick little piece. In the end, I want to uh, get rid of any barrier to entry for them to write about me. So if I hand it on a silver plate, they'll most likely execute. Yeah, I didn't get everyone, but I got quite a few. And again, for zero cost. I mean, emails, that's about it. 
Lastly, it was social networks and forums, and this was actually the most interesting for us. Um, of course, you know the top three, the big ones, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, don't get me wrong, uh, these are great. Uh, not only does Natural Motion have our own links for all these, but we also were able to leverage Jenga's IP. Uh, Jenga has, I think, over a million likes on Facebook and, I don't know, 10, 20,000 followers on Twitter, uh, and also a YouTube channel as well. So they were able to spread it, so we were able to aggregate across the board. But what was really interesting was looking at the weird second tier sites that you wouldn't know about. So Reddit was really interesting. Um, I posted on a lot of, Reddit is just a, I don't know how to explain Reddit, just a crazy forum meme site, I guess, um, that has a lot of interesting information. But they have a lot of these interesting subcategories where it's game development or game design or iOS. And I actually started posting on there, it's like, hey, we just released this game for free, I would love to hear your thoughts. But also in all those links, I also made sure to track um, the clicks. And I wanted to see what each of these individual sources would do. So I ended up posting this on uh, 45 different sites. Uh, the two that performed the best were actually Reddit and Woot. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Woot, Woot is like a daily deal site. It's where individuals go to you know, save a few dollars, whether it's a high price item that's now 50% off or buy two, get three free type of deals um, that, that are really interesting. Um, but they also have a very active forum base. So I just put a quick post. Hey guys, if you're into mobile apps, Jenga is free for a day. You guys could download it um, you know, and there's limited time behind it. Right? We all put the shenanigans in limited time. I mean, for us, it was only for four days, but you know, I made everyone think it was like imminent, 24 hours, it's gone. Um, and it, you, it tends to be a stronger call to action. From Woot, we actually ended up getting 40,000 clicks through that site, surprisingly, uh, that went to our iTunes page, which was pretty impressive for me, because uh, I was expecting like 500 from each of these, but it ended up being one of the major uh, locations. Then lastly, I have this globe. The reason I have this globe is I, I just don't have enough space to put this. I went out to every major blog game uh, or forum gaming uh, website for each individual country. Uh, this ended up being an aggregated list, aggregated list of about 300 sites. And I, again, did the exact same thing I did with the major press. Gave them a quick media kit, let them know this games are, and you know, let them do whatever they'd like with it. Because in, in our eyes, like, there's no such thing as bad press at this moment. We're just trying to get the word out of Jenga. Uh, at, uh, right now, I actually ended up doing it last week to see how many of those sites posted. It was about 28% ended up posting something about Jenga, uh, which was extremely valuable because what we ended up doing was we were getting really solid exposure in small niche countries, right? Japan and China were never on my radar for me to hit number one overall. But it ended up being these small blogs where there's a really uh, you know, a strong following. We're able to show, hey, Jenga's free. Look at this awesome video. This game's cool. Why don't you go try it out now? Don't get me wrong, the IP had a lot of value, but of course, allowing people to speak on our behalf was just probably, was probably the thing that put us over. Um, and that was a really important thing when it comes to the brink of us being maybe a top 50 game versus being the number one game in those regions. Then of course, internal promotion. We wanted to leverage our own network in order to help Jenga reach the top. One of our other freemium games that's been extremely successful is My Horse, and we have you know, over 500,000 daily active users within that. So what we wanted to do was actually leverage direct deals where we can you know, show interstitial advertisements within our app and say, hey guys, guess what? Jenga's free just for a limited time for you guys. Why don't you cross over? We also let them know that this was another natural motion game because what we have is a really strong brand correlation with our user base. They know natural make, motion makes great high definition 3D games. They also know that this game used to be paid so they'd be getting a savings here. So what we did is that we restricted the barrier of entry that when a user comes into my horse, we'd show them a full page advertisement saying, hey, Jenga's free just for you. Click here and we'll direct them right to the iTunes page. This was actually probably the most solid, unique source for us. Uh, we ended up getting about 100,000 installs converting just from direct deals uh, via Chartbuse technology, uh, which ended up really rising all the way to the top. The second thing we also have is within all of our paid games, we have a more games button. What we're trying to do is solve discovery with all other natural motion games apps. And this was huge for us because, you know, when people realize the high definition or high great quality next gen games we're building out, they want to know what else is there. And we wanted to limit that friction. We don't want them to go all the way to iTunes, search for us, then look at all of them, uh, all the apps that we have. Rather, we put it right directly in. So in a lot of our premium games, we do have a more games button. And in that was also Jenga. Then of course, leveraging social networks, as I stated before, not only did uh, Natural Motion have our own, but we leveraged Jenga's. Uh, and we actually leveraged 
all of the third party sites uh, who ended up promoting us. So, uh, you know, App A Day by iDiction uh, ended up uh, you know, tweeting us out, putting it us on their Facebook page. A lot of the free app networks also did it as well. And it was extremely valuable because if you end up going on to, you know, Twitter, you just type in pound Jenga and there were tons of tweets telling everyone it's free and that viral discovery was huge. Monetization. Um, this was one thing we really wanted to experiment. So a lot of people tell me like, "Hey, I'm gonna go to pay. I'm uh, I'm gonna take my paid app, move it to free, and then move it back to paid in order to get the uplift, right, in sales. That hopefully it'll drive a lot of buzz. That a lot of people will then see it in the free charge for those few days. And then when it goes back to paid, they might uh, you know convert and get a higher uh, higher percentage. You know, this does work well, but that's only one form of monetization. So the one big recommendation I'd ever give you is that if you are moving your app to free for just a short amount of time. Um, look at third-party monetization services and see how you can monetize the users. So we ended up utilizing a chart boost um, in order to serve an interstitial ad at the beginning of each app. But what we also made uh, sure to do was that we'd only target users who got the app for free, meaning that we didn't want to really, uh, you know, ruin our user experience for users who've actually paid legitimately for that. That's just bad. Nah, yeah, it's terrible business. Um, what we wanted to ensure is that if you got it for free, that there is going to be a slight pain point, that we're going to show you some ads and you want to monetize. What this was key for us is that, A, we were able to track all the users who came in free and see how they reacted with the game. And then secondly, we monetized the hell out of it. Um, it actually made more money via, uh, via chart boost and interstitial ads than it actually being a paid app on a daily basis. More importantly, I also put a cross promotion where Jenga was then sending installs to my horse, which was huge for us. Uh, Jenga actually ended up single-handedly where my horse before this campaign was ranked actually out of top 500 free. Jenga single-handedly through cross-promotion was able to drive it from top 500 free all the way to top 40 free. And that was just through cross-promotion. Uh, we utilized no other user acquisition, although that was a problem of mine. I should have done some user acquisition there, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, what I want to let you know is don't leave money on the table. Um, there's a lot of interesting opportunities where you could test. We only utilize chart boost and I actually left a lot of money on the table because I got to put more uh, placements in, maybe even different ad networks in, or maybe even a stronger monetization strategy. But at least I got some money and I was able to learn a lot from it. So kind of going over the summary and the results, um, you know, I know this was kind of quick, so again, if you have questions, let me know. The good. 4 million downloads, really good. Um, you know, technically we're trying to find data, so I can't officially state this, but from what we've seen so far, and I would love if someone could counter this, 4 million downloads in the first four days with no user acquisition is actually the fastest growing app of all time when it comes to iOS. Uh, again, no stats there, please uh, let me know if you find anything counter. Uh, in the first four days, we've never seen an app grow that fast from a freemium perspective. The closest we've seen was Angry Bird Space from a paid perspective. I think they did 10 million downloads in 10 days or something, or 10 million in seven days, something like that. So there's something competitive there. But what we realize is, hey, we're in that conversation. We did something right. Huge success. Then we also realized when we switched it back to paid, another huge success. Um, I didn't provide a screenshot, but again, I'd be more than happy to answer afterwards. When we moved the application back to paid, it actually reached top 10, top 25 in the paid charts in all the major countries as well. Yeah, it didn't stay there for an insane amount of time, but what it did is it did breathe life into this old existing IP. An application that's been out for almost a year and a half was able to reach the top of the charts with, you know, within, uh, after 15 months of launch, which is really impressive for us. And what we realize is that there's a lot of unique advantages you can take with the premium and freemium side. So Jenga is still now back to a paid app and is doing extremely well. Uh, third was cross promotion and monetization. Not only did we make money off Jenga, but we made money off the users Jenga sent to our other game, a freemium game, My Horse. We also were able to monetize directly via the ad deals, which was huge because we got discoverability for both our apps. What we ended up here is getting a huge value for our entire portfolio. The one thing I'm really disappointed in is I only had one freemium app. I wish I had 10 freemium maps to cross promote across because I would be able to target that and of course get that incremental uplift across my entire portfolio. And of course, zero dollars equals huge success. Although I, it's not zero dollars. I do have to come true. So after the last week I was looking at my bills, I ended up realizing a call to Japan cost $38. So in reality, $38 for 4 million downloads, which I'll still take, but I'm not gonna charge natural motion that, so we'll keep it at zero. But now let's look at the bad, and this is kind of something important and the takeaways that I feel that if you ever go down this strategy, what can you learn from us? First and for, uh, foremost, we did not capitalize on press. 
This was a huge missed opportunity. We should have had an article the day after when we reached number one. Like, the game that beat OMG Pop. Like, God, that would have been awesome. We did nothing. I'm sure almost none of you knew that Jenga hit number one overall during that time period, or even knew the Jenga app. So we missed on a huge uh, you know, opportunity from a press perspective to not only showcase what natural motion is up to, but what Jenga the app is doing. Uh, secondly, we didn't monetize as best as we should. Uh, we could have done a little bit better on the user acquisition side and aggregated a few more networks. More importantly, when it comes to the third party monetization, we utilized only chart proofs, which was fine, but we only put one placement. We only showed the ad at the launch of the app. What we should have done is taken an approach like Zynga with Friends, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, the Zynga with Friends series, like Words with Friends, where you were seeing an ad after like every turn. It would have increased our revenue by 10x, at least at a minimum, and that's something we did miss out on. Lastly, we weren't prepared. Um, we didn't think it was going to be this big. Uh, and for us, it actually led to a crash within the game. Some individuals, I mean, after 2 million daily active users, uh, some individuals were having the screen close immediately on them. Uh, we actually had a leaderboard. And the leaderboard couldn't handle it because it had too many damn scores. So it kept crashing. Um, and it was kind of a small, you know, a small missed opportunity for us, but we didn't have a team behind it because we had moved a lot of our tech presence behind. So the one thing I would recommend in regard to the takeaway is that if you are going down the strategy, learn and make sure you talk to each individual network. Um, more importantly, don't pay anything. A lot of these networks will do it for you for free. You might have to do a little bit of work on your end, whether it's creating a press or a media kit, making sure you have a strong relationship with them, and, you know, and more importantly, provide them some value back. Because the interesting thing is, is that maybe you could show some ads for that network in return for them promoting you. That could be a great value add there. Uh, in the end, you want to get creative with some of these deals. Uh, I don't think a lot of people do this enough because they take it for granted that, hey, I'm going to move from paid to free. It should do great on its own. It doesn't. It does take a lot of work. I'm not going to be telling you that any of you guys could do 4 million downloads in four days because the truth is when we aggregated all these networks I worked with, it didn't account for more than 100,000 of the 4 million downloads. But the first 100,000 is key. And that's what I would recommend for you, all of you to do. And maybe you could get that crazy organic growth. Lastly, this is my contact information. If you ever have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email on that front. And again, uh, you know, I hope this was of some value in the end. Thank you so much for your time.